All right, welcome back. We're going to keep going with pre-response questions, this time through 2013. Um, again, we just got the changes, so this isn't actually the question that I had prepared. Um, so we'll be doing it kind of for the first time together. Um, since the one I prepared was gravity. Okay, so objectives are determine the force needed to maintain uh, rest, linear acceleration, angular speed, and increase in mechanical energy, resulting from applying a rotational torque to a disc supported by a rope, looping about the edge from the ceiling at any disc radius, and compare the angular speed of the disc with a similar position in rope. Okay, so here I've got our disc, which has a mass of 2 kilograms and a radius of 10, sorry, 0.10 meters. Supported by a rope of negligible mass, um, the rope is attached to the ceiling at one end and passes underneath the disc. The other end of the rope is then pulled upward with a force of Fa. The rotational inertia is given as mr squared over 2. I want to start by calculating the magnitude of Fa necessary to hold the disc at rest. What do I need to do first? Oh. There are... So for the object, there is weight. Okay. And uh, applied force. Okay, force of weight. There's an applied force for the rope on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the object is at rest, I've got one more force acting. The other... Um, F applied force. Okay, um, that force should balance. Um, okay, so if I set this up then, um, if we're at rest, our net vertical force has to equal zero. So F dot two F A is equal to M G. Okay, so 2FA equals MG, therefore FA is... MG over 2. Okay, then we can sub in. Um, our mass was 2. I'm going to say gravity is 10. What are my units? Newton. Newtons. Okay, that should be good for part A. Okay, for part B... Um, at the time t equals zero, the force Fa is increased to 12 newtons, the disc accelerates upward, but the rope does not slip as the disc rotates. I want to calculate the linear acceleration of the disc first. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to start with the translational motion, same as what we did last time. Uh, my net force is not zero anymore, my net force will be what? So, uh, mg Okay, you're looking at the whole uh, diagram now. So I've got weight. What else? Two applied force. Uh, they're not equal anymore. Oh, there is a tension and applied force. There we go. Tension and, then and we know. applied force. Oh, so tension, yeah, tension plus applied force minus mg. Uh, should equal what? Should equal to MA. MA, there we go. Okay, so my net force equals MA. And my net force is applied force plus tension minus weight. Okay. Um, so that's translationally. Um, then I'm going to look rotationally. I don't know if I'm making up words or not, but rotationally. <laughs> And um, we would have torques. What's happening to our torque? Torque is I alpha, and that's also equal to tension times R, or force times R. Okay, so you're saying I've got two different torques that are acting on the disk? Um, in the same direction or opposite directions? Opposite. Opposite directions. My applied force is fighting the force of tension. Um, yeah. Or applied torque is fighting the torque of tension. So that would be 
F sub A times R. Mm -hmm. Oh, probably it's capital R, so I'm not sure what they have. Capital R. Um, minus the tension times R, because we're moving in opposite directions. Yeah. Should equal what? Should equal... Um, zero? Uh, not zero, because we were moving. Oh, I alpha. I alpha. Okay, what's I? MR square over two. Right. Um, and that alpha is going to be based on my acceleration. Um, alpha is our normal acceleration divided by R. So I could rewrite this as FAR minus TR is equal to MR squared over 2 times A over R. A over R. Okay, so now I've got two equations. Um, one, two. Ah. Then we find the A. And my goal is to find A. So I'm going to combine both of these equations. Yeah, but we have to simplify the torque. Uh, we can do that. So um, if I simplify the torque a little bit, what's going to happen? So all the R cancels out. One, 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 two, two. Okay. Anything else I can do? And so we will substitute for T. So um, we add, no, we subtract by applied force and then change the sign because there is negative sign in front of tension. Okay, that works. So. My tension is equal to what? Tension is equal to FA minus MA over 2. Okay, and then I can substitute this into here. Okay, so that gives me... 2FA minus m a over 2 minus m g is m a and then we add by m a over 2 so 2 m no 2 f a no and then let's divide by mass again. yeah so 2 f a minus m g is equal to 3 over 2 MA minus MG is equal to 3 MA over 2. Okay. So um, we multiply by 2, divide by 3 M, then uh, 4 FA. 4 FA over? Over 3 M. 3 M minus? Minus. 2G over M cancels out, isn't it? Uh, oh, yep. 3. 3 equals A. Okay. Um, then we could plug in and get our final answer. Um, uh, I'm going to yeah. rewrite these subscript A's so I don't accidentally think they're acceleration later. So FA uh -huh. and FA. I haven't changed anything. I'm just resubscripting. Okay. So now I can plug in. Um, and I'm kind of out of space, so I think I'm going to change colors and write in the white space. Um, okay, so my A would be equal to... Um, I've got... I'm going to pull out the two-thirds just to make this easier on myself. So this is two-thirds um, times two times our FA which is 12, so that was given here, uh, minus g, 10. Okay, so 2 by 12 is 24, minus 10 is 14. Um, I've got 14 times 2 thirds is 28 thirds. Uh, That's much bigger than what I was expecting. Hold on. Uh, 
I didn't divide by mass, that's why. Oh. Oops. So. Okay, so this should be two times FA12 over my mass. What's my mass? Uh, two. Two, okay. It's just not working. Okay, so two. Um, minus 10. Okay, so this becomes 12 minus 10 is 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. So A is 4 thirds. Um, okay. So that's 1.33, what are my units? Meter per second squared. Meters per second squared. Awesome. Any questions on B? No. OK. Part C. I'm going to calculate the angular speed of the disk at t equals 3 seconds. Um, so is there any kinematics equation that we could use um, now that we know what the uh, angular acceleration is to find angular speed. So we use um uh what was it kinematics. Yep. Um, what's our equation? So omega final is equal to omega initial plus two. No, not oh, AT. Uh, okay, say it all together one more time. So, so omega final okay. is equal to omega initial plus AT. Plus AT, there we go. Okay. Um, and that's alpha for us. Oh, uh, yeah, alpha. Since we're rotational now. Okay. Um, and then alpha is. A over 2. Uh, not A over 2, A over. Oh, R. R. Okay. Um, so our initial um, angular velocity is going to be zero. So that means our angular velocity right now is zero plus our angular acceleration, which we just solved for as 1.33, or four thirds. Four thirds times one over our radius is 0.1. Um, so that point 0.1, I'm going to write this as a fraction, is one-tenth. If I'm dividing by a fraction, uh, yeah, I then. can flip and multiply. So what's our angular velocity? Well, we also have to multiply by... Uh... Uh, oh, by time, right? Yeah. Um, we're doing three. this at three seconds, okay. Okay. So, 40. W is 40, and what are my units? Radian per square. No, radian per second. Radians per second. Okay, that was part C. Looks good. Okay, then part D, we're calculating the total mechanical energy. Uh, there is rotational kinetic. Okay, um, so there's kinetic and potential energy. Yeah. Um, energy total equals potential energy plus kinetic energy. Um, what's our equation for the um, uh, we'll do our kinetic energy first. Our kinetic energy should equal what? Kinetic energy is one half mv squared plus one half i omega squared. Okay, you're not wrong, but I'm gonna do one half m dv. Okay, plus one half. Say it again. I. I omega squared. Okay, that's gonna be a d omega as well. Change in omega. Uh, squared squared. Okay, 
So I've got one half m dv squared plus one half i dw squared. Um, so if I substitute that in, this will be my kinetic energy is equal to one half m um, v squared minus v o squared. Um, I didn't subscript that correctly, did I? I did not. Okay, I'm just gonna go from this line then. My change in kinetic energy um, translationally and my change in kinetic energy rotationally. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's look at our potential energy. Um, what's giving us potential energy? It's MGH. Just MGH, okay. Um, our change in potential energy, this is change in kinetic energy, is MGH, which is also what? Mm, but there is no change, you see it? Uh, well, as we move, as the disc rotates, it's going to move upwards, right? So there should be yeah. a there should be some change in height. Um, how could I find the change in height? Height R. Uh, not just R, no. Um, I'm going to go back to pure calculus, um, because I kind of prefer that. So, if I know my acceleration is A, what would my velocity be? AT. Okay, AT over 1 plus C, um, where that C would be my initial velocity. Uh-huh. Okay, and then what would my displacement oh. be? Uh, half at AT squared plus B initial T plus height, um, initial height. Perfect. Um, so we started with zero velocity and we started with zero initial height because I'm just looking for change in oh, height, right? It's just 80 square. Right. Um, or I could say I started with zero initial velocity, whatever my height was, this would be S minus SO equals AT squared over two, which means my change in height, which is really what I'm looking for here. MG DH is a t squared over two. Okay, any questions on what we did there? Oh. Okay. And, okay, I've got my change in kinetic, I've got my change in potential. Um, so that gives us an equation for energy. Our energy is equal to. Um, my... Um, Initial velocity is zero, initial rotational velocity, angular velocity is zero. Um, so that means, uh, if I look here, this term is zero, and this term is zero, and this term is zero. So if I plug all of this in, I'll be left with this. Um, my change in energy is equal to one half mv squared plus one half um, omega squared. Um, plus potential energy. MG. MG AT squared over two. That's a little bit squished in there, but okay. Um, so I've got my energy equation. Um, we could simplify this if we want to um, by using relationships of um, our rotational and translational velocities. Um, I could rewrite that W if we wanted to. Um, Omega V over R? Yeah. Um, hold on. We don't know our initial... We don't know our V, do we? What did we solve for the last one? We know... I 
I know my W. Okay, so I don't want to do that. I want to do the yeah. other way. Um, I want to get rid of the V instead. Um, so how can I rewrite this V instead? V is omega R. Uh, okay, that works. Uh, omega so, over R. No, wait. Yeah, omega over R. Uh, v should be R times omega, I think. V? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Omega was V over, yeah. Okay. V's. So energy yeah. is one half M omega R squared plus one half M omega squared plus M G A t squared over 2. Okay, um, then I believe we know everything. So we already solved for the linear acceleration and the angular speed, right? So we should be able to plug in at this point. Change in energy is equal to... This is... Um, you know, I think I'm going to break out for this line and go to the white space. I'm going to run out of room. So... Energy is equal to um, one half times mass of two times our omega r squared. Omega was 40. So this is 40 times 0.1 squared um, plus one half um oop, we know mass mass was two um omega squared forty squared plus m g a t squared m g so that's two by ten by our a Um, that was linear acceleration was four thirds. Four over three. Thanks. Times t was three squared over two. Okay, so we need to simplify this. Oh. Um, it looks like all of my twos are going to cancel. Mm -hmm. So two, 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 two. Two, two. One of these threes will cancel. One, one. Um, then I've got a 40 and a 10 that can cancel, leaving me with four inside here. Okay, so I see four squared. So that's 16. Um, plus 40 squared. So six, four, zero. Um, Should have one more zero here, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, sixty four hundred. Um plus ten <coughs> four three, so twelve hundred. Yeah, one twenty. Twenty, okay. Um Okay, we're still bigger than I expected. Why are we bigger than I expected? Because, oh, I've got a problem. This mass should be I for rotational inertia. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Okay, my bad. Okay, so I need to go back for this middle term. Um, this needs to be one half Um, I is M R squared over two. So that's uh, two over two by um, one over 10 squared. Uh, times omega squared. 
times 40 squared. Okay, so this will be the 6400 that we had divided by 100 is 64. Mm -hmm. um, oops, divided by 2. So that 2 doesn't cancel anymore. 32. So 32. Oh, okay, so if I add all of these up, what have we got? Uh, 168. 48, yeah, 168. Okay, and what are your units? Jewels. Jewels. All right, um, for part E, um, if we replace this disk with a hoop that had the same mass and radius, would the linear acceleration be greater than, less than, or the same as the disk? A hoop? Mm -hmm. Hoop has greater inertia, right? Yeah. Okay. So, hoop has greater inertia, so it will be less than. Perfect. Okay, less than. Um, with the reason being, uh, the rotational inertia. Of a hoop is. Greater than a disk. So the acceleration of the hoop should be less than the disk. Awesome. Um, any questions on anything we did? Uh, uh, no. Well, the third part was, no, D was a lot. Yeah, I kind of got confused with that whole rotational inertia part here in the middle with the energy. Okay, so I'm going to leave this with the annotated form um, so that we can go back and look at it later. And I'll post that to the WeChat. And in the meantime, um, the homework will be part one and two from the free response from 2013, which is already posted. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I will see you tomorrow for calculus two. Bye. Goodbye. Have a good one.